Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Well, President-elect Trump recently announced that he plans to appoint Thomas Homan as the next border czar. Now, who's Thomas Homan? He had been the acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, during Trump's first term in office, and he was very critical of Biden's open border policy. According to Trump, Homan will, and I quote, be in charge of deportation of illegal aliens back to their countries of origin. Now, as we all know, Trump vowed during this campaign that he would take a hard-lined approach to securing the border, which would include mass deportations. Now, as Homan explained, there will be a massive deportation operation because we had massive, never seen before illegal immigration, where 90% of those people, 90% will be removed. Now, during various interviews, Holman noted there won't be raids in neighborhoods gathering up people, but instead there will be targeted enforcement. What it won't look like is what I read a lot from the left, and that it's not going to be a massive uh, sweep of neighborhoods, it's not going to be massive raids, it's, it's, it's going to be a target enforcement operation. And he says that public safety and national security threats will be ICE's priority for removal. And if I'm involved, if I'm running it, it's going to be uh, public safety threats and national security threats will be the priority. However, what is troubling is that he said, even if you are not a safety or national security threat and just a plain overstay, you could still be part of this mass deportation, especially if you already have been ordered removed or deported in the past. This is because Holman believes that if a court orders a person to be removed, there has to be consequences. Otherwise, as he said, what the hell are we doing? And, and when judge issues that quarter, it has to be executed, I mean, we have to remove them if we don't. If the judge's order doesn't mean anything at the end of this due process, a great taxpayer's fact, if the judge's order doesn't mean anything and it's not executed, then what the hell are we doing? In other words, once a person goes through the court system and an immigration judge has ordered them removed, ICE intends to carry out the deportation orders, especially since 90% of the people who came through the southern border claiming asylum were found to be ineligible. They were not entitled to asylum, and they were just gaming the system just to get in. However, people may have already been ordered deported years ago for some other reason, you know, such as they didn't show up at a hearing or maybe they were unaware of the hearing, and now there is a deportation order against them. Well, Holman may also target people with existing deportation orders. And so that's why I say, before filing for a green card, citizenship, or any other kind of immigration benefit, you should see an attorney to make sure there's no outstanding deportation order against you that you were unaware of because you don't want to go to the interview and there's ice waiting for you. Now, Holman also noted that his ability to carry out the mass deportations depends on the resources he has in terms of officers available, detention facilities, judges, etc. Everybody always asks me, I, I, I've been interviewed a lot of times, how many people can you remove? I don't know. What do my resources look like? Now, what are we, how many beds am I going, are we going to have? How many, what's the size of the transportation contract? Or how much money is there? How many resources do I have? How many officers do I have? Can I bring back retired officers? And I think that Trump, who is a hardliner on immigration and has a Republican Senate and a near majority of the House will gladly increase ICE's budget to accommodate uh, Holman 
to hire more officers to patrol the border, to conduct roundups, to conduct the deportations, hire more immigration judges so that people can be deported more quickly and possibly increase the detention facilities for them. Right now, Trump and Holman believe officers are spending more time processing bogus asylum seekers and changing babies' diapers rather than engaging in enforcement activities. Because after all, when they come across the border, it's the Border Patrol who has to take care of them. Holman also pointed out that deporting people is much cheaper than housing and caring for them, as was done under the Biden administration, where asylum-seeking migrants were given free housing, sometimes at hotels, free phones, free medical care, and debit cards, which cost taxpayers a lot more than deporting them, especially if they're not eligible to be in the U.S. I can guarantee you this. The cost of this operation would be a hell of a lot less than we're spending now taking care of millions of people who aren't supposed to be here. In yet another interview, Holman emphasized that the priority for mass deportation will certainly be national security and safety threats. But when asked if others will follow, meaning other types of deportations, he responded, absolutely. Can you just limit it to criminals and national security threat, though? If I'm in charge of this, my priorities are public safety threats and national security threats first. First implies others follow, though, right? Absolutely. And one of the most troublesome comments Holman made during this interview was that if a grandma, or in your case, a tita, is living at home but happened to be at the house during the time of a raid, she could still be put in deportation. And whether she is removed would be up to the judge to decide. So you are carrying out a targeted enforcement operation. Grandma's in the house. She's undocumented. She get arrested too? Let the judge decide. The bottom line is the Trump administration plans mass deportations. And while they plan to initially target or prioritize national security and safety threats, such as criminals, terrorists, rapists, and all those, they will also go after people with previous deportation orders or even overstays if they happen to be caught up in an enforcement operation. Now, I'm putting out many videos right now on this topic because I can see people such as you are concerned and you're scared about what the future holds for you and your life in America and the lives of your family, especially your children. Many people, perhaps you, feel as though they're now being hunted down. But the purpose of my videos is to keep you informed of these new developments. And that's why I think, of course, I'm biased, but you should like, share, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Go ahead right now, click that subscribe button so I know that you're interested in these topics and also so that you can be kept updated on the latest developments and changes, probably for the worst, under the Trump administration. But here's my advice. Don't lose hope. I advise people that before taking any action on your immigration matter, you should first consult with an immigration attorney to evaluate your eligibility for the benefit, and the attorney can also advise you of the chances of success. I don't think it's a good idea during Trump's administration to try to learn immigration on your own or try to experiment, thinking that if you file and it gets denied or you mess up, you can then always go to an attorney to fix it. Because if your case gets denied because it was not done properly, you could probably already start being placed in deportation. And it is much more difficult at that time to rescue you and your case. Again, I am Michael Gerfinkel, and thank you for watching U.S. Immigration TV.